we are glad to announce something that has the potential to change the internet as we know today. Today, we are presenting DIDIT, the world's identity and financial protocol. Welcome everyone. We are Alejandro and Alberto Rosas, co-CEOs of Camium, developers and creators of DIDIT protocol. On today's internet, we're facing several challenges that stem mainly from the lack of an identity layer on the internet. One of the most well-known problems is having multiple accounts and password. Do you even know how many accounts you have on all the services that you use daily? There is another big challenge that is a lack of interoperability. Right now, when you create an account in a new service, well, you need to create your account in the first place and then you need to add personal information about yourself and you need to do that all over again and again and again. And this is very bad user experience. There is also a big challenge to prove that you are a real human. You can see that every day with CAPTCHAs or on social media when you interact or you see different fake accounts or bots. And it's very difficult to detect that in the first place. And then lastly, we have inefficient payments. Since economic value is not native from the internet, there is high fees and low settlements to make these kind of economic transfers on the internet. So, as we see, there is a lot of challenges on the internet right now, mainly due because of the identity layer problem. And with Didit, we solve this. With Didit, you can have a unique account that has interoperability of data. Then you can prove that you are also a human and you can make payments just with one click. And Alberto will explain you how. So, like Alejandro said, Didit solves the internet identity problem. Didit is the world's identity and financial protocol. And with Didit, you can sign in into any service only using your identity account. So no more need of having multiple accounts and password, just one. What you can also do with Didit? You can manage and transfer your identity data. And the best part of it is that you can choose which data you want to transfer to any service. And also making all the services having your data, which is interoperable now. And lastly, you can also have instant payments into any service that integrates it. So if you want to have payments between your users in your service, you can integrate it. If you want to receive instant payments, have a high retention rate and so on, you can also implement it. Didit is supercharging user experience. What do I mean by that? Users have everything into the same place, in the same account. You can transfer data, and make payments with just one click. And services, they can know more about their user. They can give even a personalized experience depending on who their user are. But how does it work? I am gonna explain it on a simple way and then we're gonna dive into the details. Normally, a user with his digital wallet, he's gonna try to log in or register into a service. He's gonna scan a QR code and then he's gonna receive a message specifying his willingness to give this access to these resources to the service. He's going to sign it, and then once signed it, he's going to be able to be logged in onto the application, and also he's going to be able to make instant payments on the platform. Now, let's go a little bit more on details. We have a user, which normally is a human. We have also a service provider, which is the entity that gives the service, which can be a website, an application, or even a physical store. And then we have did it. So the user is going to try to connect the wallet onto the service. He's going to probably scan a QR code, and he's going, to, he's going to receive a message later. The idea is that the service provider has to call the wallet authorization endpoint to the DIDIT protocol. The wallet authorization endpoint is going to return a challenge to the service provider that has to be signed by the user. So the user is going to receive this challenge and then he's going to sign it doing a digital signature. Once this message is signed, 
he's going to send that message back to the service provider, and the service provider is going to send it to us, to Didit, which we're going to verify that this message and this signature is valid, and then, if so, we're going to give a valid access token to the service provider, which he's going to be able to use right now to use any of the authorized resource from the user. And all this flow is encapsulated on the DDT SDK. So if you're a developer, you don't have to worry on implemented manually this flow. You can just implement the DDT SDK and everything is happening behind the magic. Anyway, it's just two API endpoints, the wallet authorization and token endpoint. So if you want to implement your own flow, it's also pretty easy to do it in just a few lines of code. We are going to show a demo now, so businesses that want to integrate it know how to do it very easily. Hello again, so uh, I'm going to present the two demos we have prepared for today. In this case, we have the Didit profile, which is a service that integrates Didit for you to fill your identity data very easily. And then we have an e-commerce store that integrates Didit for making quick and efficient payments. So we're going to start here. We just created a new identity account for you to see the process of just creating an account and just interacting with the system. So in this case, I just created an account using the digital wallet of uh, MetaMask. In this case, it's a digital wallet that lives on your browser, a browser extension. And I just created this account, which is called identity account. But remember that you can use any wallet, digital wallet that can make digital signatures. So in this case, you can use, for instance, Rainbow Wallet, which is a mobile application. You can just scan the QR code and make the same functionality we are going to show now with the mobile phone. So in this case, I'm going to choose uh, MetaMask. By the way, what you are seeing now is the DDT SDK. So I'm going to choose uh, MetaMask, and then I'm going to select my identity account I just created. So a new connection is going to be created between my wallet and the application. And now what is going to happen is that the application is requesting access for this specific data. And I have to give access to this specific data uh, if, um, uh, if, if I want. If I don't want, I just reject it and that's it. So in this case, which data they want to have access, they want to have access to read my gender, my preferred currency and so on, and also to be able to update it, okay? So in this case, I want them to give, uh, I, I, I want to give access to this application to this specific uh, data. So I sign the message, I perform the digital signature, and voila, I am authenticated. As we can see now, my identity data is empty. Obviously, I just created my identity and I'm gonna start populating it. So let's start filling uh, data. Uh, let's add my first name, my last name, my email. Then I am a developer, I save it, and this data is already saved on my identity very easily. I can also add some profile picture. Let's add it. Okay, I add some profile picture. By the way, this is just a small subset of data that is available on your identity. Uh, you have uh, on the V1 of the DD protocol, you have plenty more data, plenty more functionality regarding your identity. But the, for the purpose of this demo, you have just this information, okay? So um, let's um, fill the shipping address. For instance, I'm going to add my Spain address in this case. So Barcelona, the best city in the world, by the way. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add this address. And then I'm going to add my phone number. Obviously, guys, this is not my phone number. Please don't call it. So I'm going to add this shipping address. And now my shipping address is on my identity, which we're going to see how this information can be used by other services if they request it. I can, I can also add some contact, which is a feature you requested. And uh, I think it's a, a very good feature. You can add your list of contacts, for instance, and then a fintech company or any other company can just request this contact to make easy payment with them and so on. There is a lot of functionality that can be done. For instance, let's imagine um, a social media wants to integrate did it uh, and uh, you go to this new social media, you register it and you send them your, your first name, last name, your email, your bio, your picture, maybe a list of your contacts, okay? So uh, this social media, which is, uh, which is new, you just register it and send data with one click and you have already a profile created with all your friends that are available on this social media as well. The same for fintech company, they can use your data 
uh, for, for instance, requesting your email, requesting that um, if you are human or not to give you access to a specific service. So they can use already this available data uh, very in a very smart way to increase and improve their product and services. So uh, I feel this data. Remember, again, this is just a small subset of data. You have plenty more identity data available now on the protocol V1. So I'm going to go to this e-commerce store that integrates did it. I'm going to connect my identity account, in this case with MetaMask, the identity account will just fill the information in. I'm going to create a connection between my wallet and this e-commerce store application. And now I'm going to sign a message, giving access to the e-commerce store to read my email, my shipping address, and so on. So again, I authorize it, I sign it, I do the digital signature, and uh, voila, now I'm authenticated on this new website and they already know my data. As you can see, I didn't have to fill anything. It's the first time I registered into this new separate entity and they have already my profile picture and my name as I authorize it. Okay, so I can buy uh, this water of bottle and then I can pay with it because remember, it is not just regarding sending identity data. You can also perform economic transaction with it. So I go to the checkout page and they have already my shipping address. So I don't have to fill it again. I never had to fill it. So they have all the needed information to give a better user experience on their service. In this case, this e-commerce store. I can select as well regarding the financial part, the network that, uh, that I want and the token that I want to pay with. Uh, Didit is compatible with any payment system or network that performs digital signatures. In this case, any DLT uh, or any blockchain is almost compatible with that. So we are already compatible with a lot of blockchains. I can choose, for instance, Ethereum. I want to pay with Ethereum from GoEarly. And then I just click and I complete the order. We're going to do a digital signature on the, on the transaction as well. And then we're going to send this uh, sign transaction to the nodes for confirmation. So what we have seen here is that how I just created my identity. I just populated with data this identity. Then uh, I went to another separate entity. In this case, this e-commerce store. I used that information for having a better user experience. So the e-commerce store uh, I requested read access for my name, my shipping address, and so on. I just did one click. I didn't fill any information. And they already have all the needed information to be able to perform this service efficiently. In this case, I just made three clicks. Uh, and I already bought this water of bottle in less than one minute. OK, so this is the game changer. Uh, this is the first time uh, you have interoperable data uh, on, on the internet where you as a human can manage this data and transfer this data and make payments using your digital identity. Any service can extrapolate this kind of functionality that we have just seen on the e-commerce to improve their products and services. They can improve the onboarding process through increasing the revenue. They can reduce the cost, know more about the user to give a personalized experience and obviously improving the user experience. So the possibilities are endless. I want you to be as excited as I am of this new innovation that just happened on the internet We did it, and um, thank you so much, guys. Thanks, Alberto, for the demo. That was super easy to integrate Didit into your service. So now that you understand better what the Didit protocol is, let's wrap up what we accomplished on the V1 version. So we tackle authentication using digital signatures, basically leveraging the digital wallet infrastructure that uh, has been built on Web3. We have authorization as well. Authorization is basically the user authorizing these services to access their resources or their data. Then we tackle identity data plugin. So service providers can view or modify users' data and also even upload files. We have as well blockchain data plugin. So service providers can as well see the tokens, the collectibles, or the transactions on the blockchain from these users. And we did it with the highest security possible. So encryption and signing of tokens are using the best security practices on the market using Harvard security modules. 
And that's not the end, that's just the beginning. We are already working on DDIT protocol V2 that has some amazing features where we have the KYC plugin, basically building more trust to these service providers that integrate our service, that the user connecting to their service are actually real humans. Then we have an economic plugin, basically to facilitate these economic transactions on the internet. We also have a social login authentication to build mass adoption, letting also users uh, authenticate themselves with typical identity providers that are on the market today, not only with Web3 wallets. We also have service-specific data, so not only users will be able to add data about themselves, but other service providers can also write data about the users and they can store it on their identity. And afterwards, these users can share this data with other services, so creating real interoperability. And lastly, we're going to have more user data, basically building up and having a more complete digital identity on the internet. As you can see, this is huge. This protocol is going to become the standard. And if you really want to be part of it, please take out your phone, scan this QR code, and join the waitlist. With the rise of AI, digital agents will navigate all around the internet. And they are already here, and we need to prepare for it. In the coming years, it will be almost impossible to distinguish between reality and fiction. It will be almost impossible to know what is false information and what is not. An identity layer is needed. That's why we did it.